Hey guys, today we're looking at how we take something like cream, which is pretty liquid-like, and turn it into butter. Now, many of you probably knew we create butter from cream, but have you ever stopped to think, how does this process actually take place or how do we do this? And I'm super excited to talk about this today because we are doing a deep dive into food structure. So come on. If we want to understand how something like cream gets transformed into butter, we really have to focus on what is cream in the first place. And what I mean is what is the structure of cream? Or if we tossed it under a microscope, what will we see? And cream is actually pretty interesting because it has these tiny oil droplets held within this water phase. And this is actually a very special structure in food. We call this an emulsion. So emulsions are where you have these two different liquids that don't mix. Usually it's oil and water. And one phase is dispersed as these tiny, tiny droplets. That's called the dispersed phase. I just gave it away a little bit. And the other phase that holds in all those droplets is called the continuous phase. So in cream, the dispersed phase is those oil droplets and the continuous phase is water. Now, cream, we call that an oil in water emulsion because the oil droplets are held within the water. And what's interesting is that butter is also an emulsion, but it's a water in oil emulsion. It's the opposite of cream. And so this means during the process of converting cream to butter, we have phase inversion, meaning in cream, the oil droplets were the dispersed phase, but in butter, the oil is the continuous phase, and in cream, the water was the continuous phase, but in butter, the water is the dispersed phase, so phase inversion. Now, that might be a little tricky, but we are just going to start talking about cream, which remember is the oil in water emulsion. It has oil droplets held within the water phase. Those oil droplets in the cream, they actually contain some solid fat as well, or fat crystals. So that's what I'm trying to show in those yellow droplets, that orange part, those orange lines are representing these solid fat crystals. And you will see later in when we're trying to make butter, we need these crystals. So this is super important that there is these liquid droplets, these, this oil, but we also do need some solid fat or some oil that has crystallized into fat. Perfect. So we know a little bit about cream now, which is what we start with. So we're going to begin the butter making process, which is super easy. You can do it at home. You could do it with your kids. It just requires a container that has a lid. So I have Tupperware here I'm going to use. You could use a small mason jar, um, anything that you can close and secure it because we will be pouring the cream in here and just sh shaking this container for six to seven minutes probably until we have butter. So what I usually do is fill the container maybe halfway or three fourths of the way with cream. You do want to leave a little bit of space on top because as we shake it, you kind of want the liquid to slam against the top of that container. That will help the butter making process. So just fill up whatever type of container you have. You're going to want to make sure you have sealed this really, really good um, because what you're going to do for the next couple of minutes is honestly just shake it until you start seeing changes in the cream. What you'll notice is after a minute or two of shaking that container, if you open it up, you have something that looks like whipped cream, something you would top a dessert with because what you've been doing is actually whipping in air cells into that cream. And this changes a couple things in the structure if we were to zoom in to what's happening in that cream. Of course, we're, we're incorporating those tiny, tiny air bubbles, but also the, the oil droplets, they actually will migrate to those air bubbles. Now, why would those oil droplets move? Well, they would prefer to be in contact with the air 
those tiny air bubbles instead of being fully in that water phase. And, and we know this because we know oil and water don't like each other, that oil and water don't mix. So during this stage, we're, we're mixing in those tiny air bubbles and you'll see some of these oil droplets start migrating to the surface of that air bubble. And once these oil droplets are at the air bubble, they do something called spreading. So that just means they tend to start sharing their liquid oil, sort of spreading it out on the surface of that air bubble. And I'm trying to show that here if you look really closely at this picture. This structure doesn't last long though. So as we keep shaking that container, the air bubbles tend to pop. And you know that if you've ever played with bubbles as a kid, they always end up popping. And this is what happens in the cream as well. But this is good. This is, this is fine. This is what we want to happen because as those bubbles collapse, they bring into contact all the oil droplets that were surrounding them. And that liquid oil that was being shared, that serves as glue to hold these oil droplets all together in one large clump or a big cluster of oil droplets. When these oil droplets only partly combine, there's actually a special term for that. It's called partial coalescence. And the reason there's a term is it's a pretty special structure. So typically when two oil droplets come into contact, they just form one larger droplet. But what you can see here is really uniquely shaped structures because those oil droplets are only partly combining. Now, the reason they only partially merge is because of that solid fat within the oil droplet. It's those fat crystals I mentioned earlier and said they were really important. This is why they're important because it's those solid fat crystals within the oil droplet that stops the oil droplets from fully merging together and gives us these really unique shapes and these clumps of oil droplets. It will probably take three to four minutes of shaking that container before you start to see the clusters of these oil droplets. And once we can see these fat clusters with the naked eye, we start to call them butter grains. Right now, the butter grains are pretty small but we can grow them bigger and bigger if we keep shaking that container. What we're doing here is we're going to make those granules run into each other and collide with another. And eventually, once enough of them have come into contact, they will form this huge network of fat. It's called a fat globule network. And this is, this is such a strong structure it starts to hold in water droplets. So this is really the phase inversion step because originally in cream, those oil droplets, they were the dispersed phase, but now they have formed such a large network. They are the continuous phase and they're able to trap in those water droplets, which are now the dispersed phase. What stabilizes this water and oil emulsion to give butter a long shelf life is actually the fact that we have those solid fat crystals. So if you remember originally in cream, the oil droplets held some solid fat. Now that the oil is the continuous phase, it has some of these crystals within it. And what tends to happen is the crystals actually find each other and sort of link up or bridge to one another and they end up forming this really large crystalline network within the continuous phase. And it's this network that traps in those water droplets so it can stop the water droplets from moving and finding one another. So it can stop phase separation. So it's really the fact that some of the fat is solid, that it's not all liquid oil, that helps to form this three-dimensional network of fat crystals and give butter a really long shelf life. So in under 10 minutes, you've converted a oil and water emulsion to a water and oil emulsion, plus you have your own delicious butter to enjoy. So I hope you see why I find food structure so intriguing and leave a comment if you have any foods you like you would like to learn more about. Otherwise, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please hit that red subscribe button and I'll talk to you next time.